The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation. Mike Camping here with the lovely and talented and East Coast Liz, Liz Lee, Lindsay Bjorkland. Uh, gosh, of the name Lindsay Bjorkland with a J, Lin- Lindsay is the one I screw up. So that is that shows you what kind of party we're throwing. All right, guys, gals, we are here every week. We do live questions. If you want uh, your question read, email support at growmycleaningcover.com or join us in the live chat. You just need to be a member of our free Facebook group to do that. Facebook uh, or growmycleaningcover.com. Sorry. Boy, oh boy, just go to Facebook and search Grow My Cleaning Company groups. You'll find us. Lindsay, hit hit me with a question before I uh, take this thing completely off the rails. All right. Our first question. Well, first of all, the theme. I wanted Ah. to know this week, what is the most confusing part for you about growing your cleaning company? So first question comes from Janet in the emails. How do you convince your clients to let your team clean when the client is not home? Ah, I like that. And I love the theme. If you like the themes, that would be a Lindsay thing. Uh, I hate to be sexist, but if you put a guy in charge, we're just going to like ad hoc it. You put a lady in charge, she's like, let's have a theme. Let's make it nice. Let's like be, let's have a society here. So thank you, Lindsay, for the theme. It's such a great idea. I wish it was mine, but it was not. All right. So anytime, I don't like the word convince. Anytime I feel like I'm trying to convince a customer or employee, of something I don't feel super comfortable. So I would probably reframe that from convince to encourage. (laughs) So one, there's really two levels to this. One is the standards that you set. So you're gonna have to have a standard of we do or do not accept clients that don't let us in their home without them. I personally would accept those clients. Um, You know, they could still be jerks about it and get disqualified for other reasons, but I wouldn't disqualify them solely on, they only wanna be there when we clean. You know, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I don't think it's unreasonable, you know, not a disqualifier for me. That doesn't mean it could be for you. You have every right, um, Janet, to say, I just don't want to deal with those clients. It's totally fine. That said, I would encourage them of the benefits and I would let them know of the limitations you're going to have if that's the case. So what I would not do is go, well, you can only be in my home when we're home and we're late often and we have to do this and I want you to change the schedule. That's where I'm going to draw the line and go, hey, we're supposed to be, you know, if they're the first to clean of the day, we'll be there between, you know, 8.30 and 9 and whatever you start. And if you're the second, we'll be there between 12 and 1. And just so you know, we have keys so you don't have to worry about it. And for a little late or a little early, you're fine. Um, if we are going to be there uh, or you need to be there when we're there, we still charge. So I we coach everyone to charge in advance. So they pay for the whole month in advance. And when you have the money in advance before you do the cleaning, you'd be surprised how often they show up when they're supposed to and how little they cancel. Um, and just tell them, hey, if you're not there, we're still going to charge you. Our people are there. You pay for us to be on the schedule and be ready. So that's why we encourage people to allow us to clean while they're not there to take all the stress off. Happy to clean when you're only there, but you have to be there when we agree to be there. And if you're not, we're still gonna charge you, right? You can't just be like, hey, I know you, you know, that it costs us money to have this schedule ready and you need to be able to depend on us. And if you have to be there, we have to be able to depend on you. So I would encourage them, not convince them, uh, decide on your ground rules first, if you'll accept those clients or not. And if you do accept them and you're trying to encourage them as to the benefits to them for letting you be there when you're not, just let them know your standards of, hey, if, you know, we, we will accept cleaning only if you're there, but we won't accept not charging you or changing our whole schedule around because you happen to be running late. So really good question, Janet. If and, and good news is if that's the most confusing thing you've got going on in your cleaning business, you've got a pretty unconfusing cleaning business. So that's not a bad, not a bad situation. Who we got next, lady? All right. Next we have Eco Green Office Cleaning Services. They sent in a question and I see them in chat too. Hey yo. So- <laughs> Echo Green says, I'm confused about uh, building a management team. So they want to know the best way to start doing that. Cool. Well, if they're in chat, see if we can get a name. I hate (laughs) shouting out to Echo Green Office Cleaning Services. If I could say hello to Steve or Susie or whoever we got out there. Um, I really like that question of what's the best way to start a management, uh, 
you know, build a management team. And believe it or not, this is people fight me on this. It's so frustrating. You got to start by knowing what it is you want, right? A lot of people just want to start hiring. You know, like, let's get a job description. Let's get real clear on the outcomes that you want and why you need it. And, and they don't want to do that. They're just like, what most people do is my job description for office manager. And I hate that term because like, or VA, like super like, well, an office manager could be anything. A VA could be anything virtually. A uh, virtual assistant, like anything they assist you with virtually, that's a VA. So get crystal clear on what you want. So like all the job descriptions we have are things like scheduler, answering service, customer happiness manager, salesperson. Like I know exactly what they're going to do. Um, so A, get clarity on what you want them to do. B, we talk about thin slicing. So as opposed to one person that has lots of jobs, so if and when they quit or go on vacation or get sick or whatever the case may be, you're not just stuck and your business comes to a grinding halt. You're like, what did they do and who did it? And I don't know, decentralize that. So there's three or four people all trained to do a very small piece of it. And when one person goes on vacation, it's no big deal. The other person just takes over because they're all cross-trained. So A, get crystal clear on what you want. For our clients, we break out job descriptions and what to expect and outcomes and pay and all that. But generally, once you've got your cleaners, if you've got them doing the right thing, like they should be doing their own rags, they should be doing checks, they should be um, training each other. Once the cleaners are doing all that they should be doing in order, we recommend kind of doing a scheduler, answering service, accountant, uh, customer happiness manager, and for residential, only a salesperson. So that's who we go, but start with the clarity on exactly what you want. So it's not this thing where like I hire Lindsay and I'm like, here's all the crap I don't want to do. See ya. And then she's overwhelmed and frustrated and stressed. And every time something new comes up, I don't like, I'm like, here's more crap to do, Lindsay. Um, people tend to not thrive in that environment. Okay. Hope is that answer A, do we get a name? And B, do you think I answered Eco Green Office Cleanings question, Lindsay? Yes. A, we got a name. That's Andres. Andres, can't talk. And B, I think they answered the question. Cool. Hopefully that was helpful to get you started, Andres. Who's next, Lindsay? All right. Of course, I uh, just minimized my <laughs> questions. There they are. Yeah. All right. Behind the scenes here. Okay. Um, actually, we have a question in chat from Selena. She wants to know, where is the best place to advertise to hire employees? That's a really good question. So what I want to encourage all of you guys and gals out there is one of the mistakes people make is they focus or hyper focus on where they advertise and they don't focus enough on what they advertise. So they put out a super generic, boring same as everybody else ad, you know, fast growing company, looking for hardworking people, paid training, flexible schedule, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't matter where you put that, you're going to get shellac. So start with the core, start with knowing what your core values are. Make sure you have, you bake those core values into a core base, core values based hiring ad, which talks more about the community and the experience they're going to have, not just a bunch of gobbledygook, and then have a core values based automated system to get them onboarded. Once that's all done, then you want to put the ad where people are seeing it. I hate to say it because I really don't like them as a company, but Indeed uh, at this point is pretty good at getting applications at a reasonable price. Uh, we're recording this January, 2024. Don't fall for their paper applicant crap. It's too expensive. Get the paper day option. They kind of hide it because it's the good one that saves you money. Um, but know their customer service ain't great, right? They, you'll, if you call and talk to 10 different people, three will be pretty decent. Three will be flat out terrible and the rest will be blah. So can't do a high recommend. We've also done some stuff with wise hire. The deal we've got for them for our clients is pretty good. I don't know if their regular deals okay. Even with them, they get like this five hundred dollar package. Anyway, don't do a long term contract or anything. Um, anyway, big thing is test different things. Know your market. It's much more important you have a message that's going to call out the right people and exclude the wrong people. When you say stuff like competitive pay, flexible schedule, you could be attracting people that are lazy and don't want to work very much and want a lot of money. <laughs> you say hardworking, fun, customer service, you get people that want that. So I would focus as much or more on what you say than where you say it. All right. I'm going to flip it back to chat again because uh, Katia, you might have answered your question a little bit, but she wanted to know how can I hire more people to work for me? This is so frustrating. It's so hard to find the right people. So this is, I'm not exactly sure I understand the question. How can I get more people that work for me? I don't know if she means cleaners or what, but again, all the stuff that we're talking about is the same thing, whether you're hiring cleaners or admins, start with core values, right? So really clear for us, it's have fun, make money, be real and help out. So 
when I met Lindsay the first time, if I was like, is she nice? Yeah. Do I think she'd be good? I'm like, I guess she like, what do you, how do you know? It's, it's just a very squishy question. But if I was like, do I think this is a person who enjoys having fun and I would have fun being around and she would, the company and the employees would like, you know, ever, ever the, the employees, the customers, everyone else would like her. Yeah. Does she like making money? Is she passionate about making money? You know, some people are like, I don't want to be rich. Rich is evil, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They just wouldn't be a good fit on this team. Does she really love helping out? Like, so it's much easier as opposed to be like, is she a nice person that I think can do this job? It's such a general question. It's really hard to answer. But when you have very clear criterion, it's much easier to answer. Does this seem like a fun person? Does she seem like she loves to help out? Much easier to answer than, is she a good fit for this position? Like, I don't know. So first and foremost, make sure you've got their core values. Second, make sure whole funnel is just imbued with those core values. And then in terms of more, just have systems and processes. Most of the time when people are like, I don't have enough people. No one wants to work. It sucks. I'm like, great. How much did you spend on advertising for employees last month? I don't know. How many applications did you get? A ton. Well, I, is 116, 394. Like, what do we mean? I don't know. How many interviews did you conduct face-to-face? -face? Well, I talk to, you know, I called 31 people with applications. I got bored and frustrated and quit. Okay. How many starts did you have? How many, like there's no data tracking. And most of the time they just don't have a system that is scalable, right? The system is they put out ads, a bunch of people that they don't like fill an application. They spend way too much time calling these applications one by one, getting frustrated that there's, they suck. They finally get someone there and they'll, they'll interview three people and only one is not good, but just not terrible. And they hire that one guy and say something crazy like, there's nobody good in my area, right? And the reality is they just don't have enough good applications. So A, make sure you're doing everything core values based, B, up your system so you can have hundreds of applications processed. And we teach group inter automated funnel to a group interview, to a one-on-one. -on -one. We have the employees, the, the cleaners do it for each other. So have a system that can scale and scale that bad boy, right? Most of the time people, you know, need five people and they'll interview six and wonder why they can't, you know, and they do it one by one, which is brutal. So you do a group interview, you automate it so you can interview or have your people interview 30 or 40 in a month. And then of course to find six, no big deal. Hey, amazing people. You may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask I can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show, for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now, back to the show. Going back to chat, chat's hopping today. Way to go, guys. Um, all right, Cortez Cleaning Services wants to know, to get bids or clients for a residential cleaning company, are real estate companies to market a good place to try oh wait he corrected himself our real or he or she cortez let me know your first name are real estate companies a good place to market for residential I, no because most of the time real estate companies are going to get you move in move outs which is not what we want right realtors deal with buying and selling so they do move in move out so they're not recurring which is what we want and a lot of people are like well you know what if they turn into a recur like maybe i don't know i just i'm good enough at marketing for the clients i want i don't have to take the clients i don't want and hope they turn into the clients that i want i'd rather just market the places that i want so having done this eight years we hear a lot of i've got a realtor that knows a thousand people and it's like why do you think that realtor is so desperate for a client oh because there's a friend of mine like i got it but how come you don't have any friends of yours that have like good client you know what i'm saying like the good clients are not having a problem finding a home the fact that someone's got a bunch of these quote unquote good clients is always a red flag that they're not great clients so no i would not intentionally market to realtors because they're typically going to bring move in move outs which is not what i want good questions by the way yeah, Chad is great today. And that was Adrian, by the way. I got a first name, Adrian. Nicely done, Adrian. And uh, <laughs> there's some agreement in chat <laughs> where someone said, yeah, I agree, realtors suck. <laughs> Ouch. Boy, that just that <laughs> took a turn. I wasn't ready to go all that far, but all right. Now, now the gloves are off, kids. Let's go. <laughs> Chad is awesome today. All right. We're back to uh, a comment that was made earlier in Facebook, a question from Corey. Um, when do you start allocating money towards marketing? Because more marketing should equate more business and more business equates to hiring more employees. And it seems as if it should all happen at the same time, but nothing in this business goes as planned. Great question, Corey. Very, um, very uh, in theme with what's the most confusing thing that can be super confusing. And I want to encourage you. It's not this business there, nothing goes to plan. Any business, um, things go goofy. You just need to upgrade your system. So just need to 
just a matter of experience. So things can go as planned. I promise you. It's, it's not as bad as all that. So really good question. The confusion comes in, Corey and other listeners. People put marketing as a flat number, whereas it should be a percentage of revenue. So um, depending on how fast you want to grow, because we coach to a, a 30% net profit. So you're going to want marketing somewhere between 5 and 10% of your revenue. So if you start with no revenue, you can maybe just put a flat 500 or $1,000 into the account, however much you want into the account and use that. Or you can just be like, hey, I'm just going to do free marketing, right? Not all marketing costs money. It either costs time or money. And money is really just buying other people's time. <laughs> so even if it's Facebook, you bought their time to find all these you know, people and get all their information and send them to you. So um, five or 10% of your budget should be to marketing. And yes, as you grow, that number will increase. And again, so to answer your question, five to 10% of your total revenue in a cleaning company should go to marketing and you can still maintain a net 30% profit off of uh, with that. That said, the big mistake comes in where people don't track. So same with a hiring when people spend money in marketing, go, oh, I tried Facebook, it didn't work. I'm like, how much did you spend? Like 300 bucks. I'm like, how many leads did you get? None. And like, so nobody called. Well, people called, but like they weren't any good. Like, and great. Six people called, 100 people called, no people called. So they don't have their cost per lead. They don't know how many bids they got. They didn't get any data like upstream. So say they got four calls and only one of them was a good lead and nobody turned into customers. But see, Facebook didn't work. It's like, well, hold on. If you spent 300 bucks and you got four leads, that's 75 bucks a lead. That's not that bad. And you bid, that's $300 a bid. That's not that bad. You just didn't sell that one bid. So Make sure you're tracking what you're doing and making data-based decisions, not emotional-based decisions. Emotional-based decisions sounds like, I tried Facebook and it didn't work. What does that mean? I gave him 500 bucks on it and nobody bought anything. Data-based decision is, I spent $300, I got four leads at $75 per lead, I only got one bid, um, that's $300 a bid, that's a little high, but I close at half my bid, so that's about $600 for a sale, it's a little high, but I think because that was my first $300 and Facebook wasn't trained on who I want and I, didn't improve my copy. I think I can get that cost down. Like now we're dealing with data that we can work with, but just saying I, I did and didn't work with no data is uh, a shot right through your own foot. All right, moving on here. We got uh, an email from Rena. This was actually from last week and uh, something she was stuck on in her cleaning company, similar, similar theme. But she said, I feel stuck when I do walkthroughs and no, I'm clearly not the cleaner for them. I know we set boundaries and both agree to say if we don't think we're a good fit, but when they ask why, I don't know what to say without being rude. Any advice? Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I don't, most of the time, if you do it right, they shouldn't ask. So great job. I'm going to, I love that Rain is obviously a follower or a client in that we're going to set ground rules before we ever go out and we're going to get permission if we don't think we're a good fit that we can tell them. And if they don't think we're a good fit, they can tell us. And what they, then we're going to ask them, what would like, what would you like to see happen if we both think we're a good fit? And they're going to say, I'm going to get started. So we're going to go out with kind of a commitment for a decision. So that's all great, Rain. I'm really good doing there. But I would just tell them, like, you know, usually it's they're super picky and they want a bunch of stuff done that you just don't think you're the best in the world to do. So, hey, Lindsay, you know, I don't think we're a fit. Why not? Well, frankly, you want, um, you know, you said that you wanted everything cleaned and nothing never to be a mistake and you're going to follow them around. And that's all very reasonable. You can do all that. It's just not how we work. Our goal is to, have, when you come home, have you feel great about yourself and your house. And that doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes. It just means your favorite day is the day the cleaners come because you come home and you the house looks good and it smells good and it makes you feel good. If that's what you're looking at. So I'm going to try and rehabilitate Lindsay and have her go, well, that is what I want. And if she kind of moves towards my way and starts being a normal human, then maybe we can work together. She's like, no, I want to follow them around and they can't miss anything and they have to do everything. And I'm like, no problem. We just can't accommodate what you want because that's almost always it. They want X and you aren't willing or able to provide X. So you just tell them it's, and you don't judge it. Like that's unreasonable, Lindsay, for you to follow my cleaners around. People hate that. What kind of psycho are you? That's going to be a problem. But if you're just like totally understand, you want to follow the cleaners and hold their hands and yell at them throughout the process, makes perfect sense. Who wouldn't want to do that? Unfortunately, that's not a service we offer. Like you see, you just get clear on what it is they want that you're not willing to provide and just say, you don't judge it. You just say, we don't provide that service. So then it's not on Lindsay. Are you a God dang psychopath, Lindsay, who would do that? That's a Lindsay attack. She's like, why? Why do I even come on these calls when he just yells at me all the time? I use you for good and bad examples, Lindsay. Most of them are good. So you got to take the good with the bad. So I don't do that to Lindsay. 
I would talk about her problem or her issue, like, hey, I want you to be here, you know, 6 a.m. And I want you, you know, everyone in starch white shirts and I plan on doing an inspection or whatever crazy thing she's doing. I'm not going to call it crazy. And I'm going to say, I can't do that service. I can't, not that I, you're a problem, Lindsay, what you want's a problem. Okay. Hopefully that answered the question. I feel like uh, we're running, we're right. We, you got, did we have more? We, I think we got more. We, got we probably got time more. for one more. You tell me. Yeah, we got, we got one more. And it's, it's kind of a two-parter, but I think it'll be an easy one. So this is from uh, Shauna from email uh, last week. For commercial cleaning, do you suggest asking new clients to also pay for an an initial deep clean in, additional, in addition to their monthly rates. When taking on new clients, how do you get the facility up to a standard that is reasonable for a team to clean nightly if you do not require an initial deep clean? Yeah, so it's a little different on commercial versus residential, but the overriding theme, the reason we pick, um, we want recurring customers and not one time, is we're looking to maximize lifetime value. So. I'm okay if I make a little less money on the first clean or couple cleans. Let's just say an average commercial accounts 1500 bucks a month or $18,000 a year and they stay three years. Well, shoot, that's almost 50 grand, right? Or maybe it's more than 50 grand. I think it's more than 50 grand. If I lose 82 bucks in cleaning, the you know, four extra hours at 20 bucks an hour, 80, you know, in month one, am I okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, even on a residential, if the average is, you know, four grand a year and they stay two years, that's still eight grand. Am I okay investing a couple bucks at the beginning? Of course. So I'm always optimizing for lifetime value of the client, not how much money I can make today. So for commercial, um, and again, you can get into the whole like, well, look how shabby this place is. Your old cleaner sucks. And you think you're, A, it sounds wildly unprofessional for you to knock your competition. B, you're really knocking them because they chose that competition. So you're really going look what a stupid mistake you made. And people don't like that. So not only is it not professional, it does not help. So just even if that's the case, no need to articulate. Well, we have to charge extra because the like they're not gonna be like, yeah, I am stupid. I made a terrible, I should pay extra for that. They're gonna just get pissed at you. So for commercial, there's no circumstance. If it's a specific like, hey, I need you to strip and wax this floor, or we need you to just, like if it's a specific service they're requesting, obviously we're gonna charge for that. But if it's just, you don't feel like it's up to snuff and you feel it's gonna take extra time, I'm just gonna, charge enough where, you know, it's a good lifetime value and I'm going to be fine with that. And I might tell them, Hey, we're not going to get all this fixed in night one, but you know, set reasonable expectations the first week, the first month, depending on how big of a mess it is, we'll have it fixed up. I'm not charging extra for that. When it comes to residential, I'm probably gonna do the exact same thing, but I'll give a couple, couple other options. So for commercial, like that's kind of the only real right answer for residential. You could do a deal where it's like, you could charge up front. I don't. Um, if I was going to, I would do it at cost. So say I thought it was going to cost me a hundred bucks to get it up to speed. I would say, hey, I can get up to speed over the next three or four cleanings for free. If you want us to spend a little extra time right off the bat for $47, I can get it all done. That way, at least it's covering my cost. But the big philosophical answer is focus on lifetime value. And the more value you give up front, the more longer, the longer they stay. If you could reduce your churn, you'll make way more money than charge an extra hundred bucks on a deep clean. So hopefully we got that. Did I get everyone, Lindsay, anyone out there missing or did we take care of all that needed? I think we took care of everything that needed to be. Sounds good. It's a party. All right, Cleaning Nation. Thanks for hanging with us. If you want to, uh, if you're listening to the podcast and want to join the party, just go to Facebook, search Grow My Cleaning Company Group. That's where we do this. Um, if you want to have a question or a comment, uh, support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Lindsay will get that. We should put you on the show. Have a great week. See you. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can, as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.